making us happy. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaitutandran Jaya Dhoda Vasavinda Eta Kila Gratta Rambe Mukta Banda Eta Kahi Chaitanya Lila Brahma Anubanda Translation, thus I have spoken the preface of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Now I shall describe Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes in chronological order. Let me give a synopsis of the Lord's pastimes. I shall describe them in detail. We'll stop here. Panchakopa, the Rubis, Jaki Ba, Sindhu, Ava Japa Kitana, Pavan, Yo, Vaishu, Yo, Namahonda Mahas, Ajanu, Lambita, Bujo, Kanakama, Dado, Sun, Kir, Tanai, Pupita, Lo, Kamala, Yotakso, Vishwambaro, Dwijabaro, Yuga Dharma, Pralo, Vande, Jagatriya, Karo, Karuna, Vataro, one day she Krishna Chaitanya Nityanam Dose and Odiro Garodaya Pushpan Vanto Sitta Sando Tamo Nido. Why she Krishna Panchatat from a come Krishna Bhakta Rupa Sarupa come Bhakta Avatar Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakti Shakti come Jai she Krishna Chaitanya Tamo Nityananda she had way to get out her and she master the old of our children. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mm. Well, the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the celebration day, which according to the calendar is tomorrow, is the beginning of the new year for the Gaudi Vaishnavas. And we celebrate in the beginning of the new year on um, the appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. <laughs> Sri Krishna Chaitanya Ratha Krishna Ayanahiyanya. Who is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? It's something very difficult to understand and or to uh, uh, worship. But actually very easy to worship, difficult to understand. What is that difficulty here is Krishna. He doesn't wear a peacock feather. He doesn't carry a flute. He carries a danda, a staff in the mood of a renunciate, which is quite contrary to the nature of the absolute truth, which there is nothing to renounce for God that God is the source of everything. But in the role of his own devotee, he accepts this order of sannyas in order to expand the preaching of Krishna consciousness everywhere. Because the sannyas order, particularly at that time, was very much revered by everyone. And therefore, in order to get the audience he accepted that, knowing that that position would allow him to spread Krishna consciousness far and wide. And so he accepted that. And although it was a, uh, what we call impersonal sannyas, a mayavad sannyas, which was current at the time, he accepted it. And he also used it to convert 60,000 mayavadis at Benares. Kashi into Vaishnavas. So the Lord's mission is to is to is to uh, propagate the chanting of the holy names of the Lord and to experience his own internal mood of devotion. Uh, 
And we say he is a he's a combined incarnation of Radharani and Krishna. So what is the nature of that combination? And he has her ba bhakti. And he, but he is Krishna himself. So he, in order for him to understand her love for him, he is, takes her position in the mood of a pure devotee of the Lord. Uh, so God wants to understand his position as being the absolute principle of worship and the attraction which Radharani has for him. So he accepts that role. That's his internal mood which we might say is the more prominent reason for his appearance in order to demonstrate that mood in the mood of Vrindavan. But he's also come in order to spread the glories of pure devotional service in the form of the chanting of the holy names of the Lord. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, although he was Krishna himself, he would never like to be referred to in that role, nor is he worshipped in the role of Krishna. Although he, many of his followers were aware of his position as being the Supreme Lord, they wouldn't dare refer to him in that role because he made it clear that he, he is not Krishna, although he is. Why did he do that? Because it was fashionable, it's even fashionable today, but it was more fashionable in those days to want to present the idea that the, the living entity is actually God, the Mayavadi philosophy. That the living entity who has fallen into the material world is simply a leela of God's existence in order to carry out the process of purification. So they foolishly concoct this idea that uh, the living entity is God, but he's forgotten. And when he becomes again self-realized, he he's aware of his God nature. And then he is understood in that role as he is, the, he is God. But God is one, no one be, can become God, nor does God lose his position as being God. <laughs> He is always God. So this idea of the living entity forgetting their position as being God is completely ludicrous and contrary to the nature of the absolute truth. The reason why they developed that false idea is that because the living entity is godly, but not God. It's like water comes in different forms and different quantities. But no one, no, nothing can compare to the ocean, which is vast and unlimited. So, but in the same way, the living entities have some quality, they have some of the qualities of God. They have the interest, intrinsic nature of God, which is spiritual. Um, but they are not God, they are a particle of God. So, this is very important to understand as a devotee, if it's not. There are others who are very fashionable to describe them in our God. And it's also understood that many times the people who practice Krishna consciousness, when they get very advanced in their practice, they develop this wrong mentality on this higher stage of bhakti, thinking that, yes, I'm an incarnation of God. Now I understood my position having gained so much spiritual credits and realizations through the process of bhakti, they get fooled by this last stage, thinking that they are actually God themselves. And that, that happens for those who are somewhat influenced by a little bit of pride, which can manifest at any time in one's devotional life. <laughs> So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission is to uh, spread the Yuga Dharma, which is to propagate the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And he did that. There's one beautiful pastime when he, he, his first time he indicated who he was when he was three years old. 
a nice story where living in the village in Navadweep with his parents, Jagannath Mishra, Sachi Mata, and along with his older brother, Vishwaru, who was an incarnation or manifestation of Sankarshan, um, he was only a three-year-old boy. And there was one traveling in Sadhu. He was not very old, a young man, but he had developed this idea of traveling and, and uh, living at Madhukari. That means he would be begging for whatever he needed. And uh, so he lived that way. So he came to the house of Jagannath Mishra because Jagannath Mishra was a Brahmanu. And so he visited the house of Jagannath Mishra. And Jagannath Mishra welcomed him in. And the man said, I am, I've been fasting for three days. Um, and therefore Jagannath Mishra made all arrangements. He said, oh, please break your fast here. It will be our honor to serve you in that way. So he was happy. Now this um, Brahmin, he used to carry around his neck a deity of Gopal on a, on, a, on a string around his neck. And he would worship his Gopal deity regularly. There are mantras for worshiping the Gopal deity. There are the 18, there's the 18 syllable Gopal mantra, 12 syllable Gopal mantra, 10 syllable Gopal mantra, and the six syllable Gopal mantra. So he would do the six syllable Gopal mantra every day, worship his deity with that mantra. So now he was all ready to break his fast. And so uh, Jagannath Mishra arranged for all of the ingredients for him to cook. Um, everything was in place, so he came and he started to cook. And after some time, he had prepared this meal of nice rice for his deity, Gopal. So mm -hmm. he was there. He put his place his Gopal deity there, put the offering of rice there and started chanting Gopal's mantra. Just right after his chanting, little Nimai, who was only three, more, three years old at that time, came onto the scene and started eating the rice. Immediately, the Brahmin became astonished and shocked. Oh, this boy is coming. He's ruining the whole offering. So he started to cry out, hi, 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 hi. This alerted Jagannath Mishra saw what was happening and he saw his son and the Nimai, when he saw his father came, he ran away. And Jagannath Mishra was very feeling very sorry that this happened. He had welcomed this uh, Brahmin in, but now his little son had ruined the whole offering. And so he apologized and he said, oh, please cook again. We'll make all arrangements. The Brahmin said, no, no, actually, I can see it is Lord Krishna's mercy. He doesn't want me to eat today. So I will fast. No, no, you are our guest. So please uh, do the needful and uh, look again. So he was convinced. He said, don't worry. We might be sleeping. He won't bother you anymore. And so he went away, and then the Brahmin started to cook again. And of course, he had to clean the whole kitchen, and he had to start everything over from scratch. It was, uh, he was, he had to, you know, prepare all of the, clean all the pots, make all of the arrangements, and then again prepare himself for the meal. So he has just took some hours to get everything again ready for the for cooking. And then he began cooking. And after a couple hours, he had finished. And now he was ready to make his offering again. So he placed, as he had done before, he had placed the beauty of his uh, soap off in front of the offering. And uh, he was all ready to make the offering. And he started to chant the Gopal Mantra again. And as he was chanting, little Nimai came running in and started eating the offering. 
And then he started to cry out, Hi, 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 it's out, he's done it again, he's done it again. He became stressful. Begadus Mishra came out, this time he came out with a stick, and he saw a little Nima and he started chasing him. Nima was fast and he ran in his room and he locked the door from the inside so his father couldn't get in. So now Jagannath Mishra is besides himself with sorrow. Oh, twice has happened to this guest. You were welcome, welcoming this guest and such an exalted person. Well, now we, we cannot even serve him nicely because of my, my little son is destroying everything. So he was profusely apologizing. And he said, well, but the Brahmin started to say, well, actually, you know, I can see this is Krishna's arrangement. He wants me to continue my fast so that I won't, I won't say, do anything else. Jagannath Mishra was saying, no, 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 actually, we should do it. But still, the Brahmin wasn't going to change his mind. Finally, on the scene, walks Vishravup, the older brother of Lord Chaitanya. And he is, um, he is the personification of beauty. When uh, the Brahmin saw this voice, oh, who is this beautiful boy? And Jagannath Mishra said, oh, that is my older son, Vishravup. And Vishwarup looked at the Brahmin in a very merciful way. He said, my dear Brahmin, you have come to our house. This is our good fortune. Please, we are sorry that things have not worked out. But please, I assure you, if you cook again, everything will be nice. So after hearing the sweet words of Vishwarup, and Jagannath Mishra said, yes, yes, don't worry, Nimai, he is sleeping. He is in his room. He will not come out again. So he took assurance. And uh, and then this was getting late in the evening now. So now everyone took rest. And when he was cooking again, cleaning all the pots from scratch, and then starting the offerings, getting all the ingredients. Finally, it was about midnight when he finished his offering. Now he's ready to sit down places the deity in front of the offering and starts chanting the mantra. And guess what? Here comes the little Nemo again. And he starts eating the offering. <laughs> and uh, the Brahmin starts yelling out, hi, 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 hi. And, but nobody's around. Everybody's sleeping. Nobody's hearing them. So he's in distress. Finally, Nimai turns to him. He says, what are you complaining? What is the problem? You're calling me by my mantra, and I'm coming. I'm accepting your offering, and you are in distress. And then the Brahmin, his eyes got big. And then he was looking, and then all of a sudden, the whole scene changed in the house. He was no longer in the house of of uh, Jagannath Mishri, the whole scene had become Vrindavan. And there were peacocks and birds and lakes. And there were residents of Vrindavan walking around. And little Nimai was there, but now he was in the form of who he actually was. Krishna himself in Vrindavan. So when this Brahman saw that, this vision that was given to him by the Lord, he started to call out in ecstasy, crying in ecstasy, offering prayers to the Lord, rolling on the ground in happiness, crying out. And at one point, he, he just was so exhausted in his ecstasy, he lost consciousness. <laughs> Finally, he got after some time, he came back to consciousness. And Nimai now had, had returned back to the area of, the, of Navadweep, and the scene of Vrindavan had changed. And uh, then Nimai spoke. He said, my dear Brahman, you have been my uh, devotee life after life after life. And so you have worshipped me nicely. And I am very pleased to know. But one thing you must do 
we must not tell anyone what happened this evening. If you do, then um, I will have to cut your life short. <laughs> In other words, it was a pretty strong threat. So don't tell anyone. <laughs> well, the Brahman, of course, is still, you know, still in half ecstasy, seeing the Lord standing there before him, talking to him. And so, and then the Lord told him, um, then he went and left. So now he's in ecstasy. He's taking the rice and he's throwing it in the different areas. He's sticking it on his body. <laughs> he's eating something. He's just like a madman in ecstasy. And then uh, this part caused a commotion. And then Dr. Nath Mishra and some of the household ladies woke up and they saw that he was like, and they all thought, well, he finally got something to eat. <laughs> but he was about to say, your son is actually Krishna. <laughs> but then he remembered, and he just came, became very quiet. And then everybody left, and after some time, that Brahmin left. But that Brahmin came back every day to the house of Jagannath Mishu, just to associate with little Nimai. So Nimai gave him personal association. For three months, he would come every day just to see the Lord, and he would play with the Lord. So this is the first of all of the Lord's subsequent leelas of revealing his real identity. There are not too many of these leelas, but this was the first one. So this Brahman was very fortunate. And as the Lord said, you have been my devotee life after life. Mm -hmm. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very merciful. But he made it clear, do not tell anyone what you see. Because the Lord never wanted to be referred to or understood as the supreme lord he wanted he wanted he, his position was always to be a devotee of the lord even be but well, that cone came on later on in his life after he met after he went to gaya and he met his uh, spiritual master ishwar puri and took initiation from ishwar puri in gaya and that's when he was a young man already so before then, he was Nimai Pandit, the great scholar of Navadri, who was expert in logic and grammar, and was also known as for his, his ability to defeat anyone and his arrogance about all of the knowledge that he had. <laughs> but that was the Lord playing that. Why did the Lord spend practically... Uh, I think it was 18 years of his life, almost, simply uh, playing the role of a, you know, a literary scholar. The question you might ask, why did he do that? There's an answer. The answer is that he wanted to show that, of course, at that time, to be a pundit, to know the scriptures and to defeat others in the scriptures was considered an exalted position in society. Like nowadays, who are the exalted positions in society? People who are filthy rich, people who are uh, in, in some kind of entertainment industry and can attract crowds by their musical abilities, sports, heroes, and other people. You know, people worship these people. But in, in, in 500 some years ago in Navadri and throughout India, a person's glory, greatness was that they were a pundit. They knew the scriptures and they could defeat others in the scriptures. So the Lord wanted to show that at one point he gave up 
that position, being known as the greatest scholar in Navaji, and took the position of being a humble Vaishnava, a devotee of the Lord, just to show that even the greatest material position and the honor that comes with it is totally insignificant to becoming a devotee. Very important thing. Sometimes we put, we think it's so it's so glorious that someone is has a big position in society, is very influential, and can do so many things. But that's material, and that's temporary, and it's also uh, part of Krishna's mercy upon that person. But it's not the success of life, because all of that will be finished in time. Therefore, it says, there's a beautiful verse, Taktva Sadharma, Taktva Sadharma Saranam Hari. I can't remember the whole verse. It's from the first canto, fifth chapter, verse number 17. Turn to that verse, 1517. Taktva Sadharma Saranam Hari. 1517. Srimad Bhagavatam. Taktva Swadharma Charanam Bujam Hare Bajan Pokam Tat Pati Yato Yadi Yatatko Baba Dram Abhutta Musakim Kovarta Apto Bajatam Swadharma Taha One who has forsaken his material occupations to engage in devotional service of the Lord may sometimes fall down while in an immature stage. Yet there is no danger of his being unsuccessful. On the other hand, a non-devotee, though fairly, thoroughly engaged, fully engaged in occupational duties, does not gain anything. <laughs> now here it shows that even a devotee who takes to devotional service but falls away in due course of time will eventually become successful in due course of time, either in this life or in the next. But one who's taken up material occupations, what do they gain? Everything is finished at death and nothing is left. <laughs> Even if they get, get it that far, I want to speak about all of the problems that one the you know, austerities one has to go undergo in order to achieve anything in this world. Also, when we, so Lord Chaitanya used that uh, his position as a great scholar just to give it up to show I'm giving it up to become a devotee. I'm uh, I'm showing that devotional service is greater. Than any material situation, position, anything material. Okay, we'll stop there. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for narrating so sweet past times of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It just reminds us everything how sweetly he gave the darshan to Brahmana and he stayed three months with the, you know, um, spent the time with the, with the Brahmana. So fortunate and blessed so he is and definitely a pure soul and devotees if you have any questions comments uh, realizations please unmute yourself uh, yeah and please keep your cameras on as well so we can take your darshan thank you Hare Krishna yes Gopika Radhika Mataji please go ahead the Brahmin would come every day and play with the Lord for a little bit and then he would leave and then he would come back the next day and play again he, he didn't stay there. He just came and gone, gone every day. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. I'm, I'm so happy to be here. I actually came to know about these daily classes of yours just today. And oh, I... Radhika, my obeisances. <laughs> my obeisances, Maharaj. My obeisances. Yeah, nice to hear from you. <laughs> and then I checked with Sri Devi Mataji if I could attend and she confirmed that yes, these classes are open to all. So yeah, I'm really happy to be able to join. 
Thank you. Um, <laughs> Maharaj, I, uh, my, um, I wanted to ask, uh, just like we see uh, when Krishna descended to the earthly planet, before that he ordered all the demigods to take birth uh, as different people on the earth uh, in preparation for his pastimes. And uh, similarly, we hear in the Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, we see the word Krita Punya Punjaha used for the cowherd boys, that they are people, they are boys, I mean, their personalities with volumes and volumes of previous uh, spiritual credits, spies credits. So my question was that when uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared on this planet, was it a similar case in, in the sense that anyone who saw him or anyone who got to interact with him, were they all kind of like his eternal associates or special people who were specifically assigned to take birth over here? Or were there also just common people who happened to be there, just common people like myself who happened to be there and therefore they got this wonderful opportunity to interact with the Lord or have his darshan? I think he, I think from, from the same Leela that Krishna performed, now Goranga is performing that same Leela in the same way, that he, uh, there were both persons there, many of them where his uh, personal entourage, which he brought from the spiritual world in order to assist in his pastimes. And many were just persons who were in that area, just like Sarabhama Bhattacharya, you know, he didn't even recognize the Lord initially, not only until mm -hmm. he sat with the Lord and heard from the Lord about the, you know, the understanding, the clear understanding of Vedanta. I mean, the Lord defeated him, showing that he didn't know anything of Vedanta, and he was considered to be the best scholar in the area at the time. So yeah. there were both kinds of people. There were those his, his eternal associates, and there were those who were also, you know, deputed to come before Srila Haridas Thakur, Dvaita Charya, Srivas Thakur, um, let's see, who else? Uh, Vishwan Nimbarka, was it? That was it. Uh, the um, the uh, father of uh, Sachi Mata, who was that? Um, Nilambar Chakravarti. Yeah, Nilambar yeah, right, Chakravarti. These, all these persons appeared before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. On the Mahaprabhu's, mm -hmm. in order for him them to set the stage for his pastimes. So that right. yeah, you that there, but you also have, and he interacted with many people on a, who were just persons who were living in Navadweep at that time. He had his okay. students, and he had others. So they were both. Mm -hmm. I, a number were people who were common people in general, and just a few chosen to assist him in his pastimes. So that's like just causeless mercy, right? They happen to be at the right place at the right time, and they got the mercy. Just like you, but you are in the right place at the right time, and you got the mercy too. <laughs> Right. <laughs> yes, right. It's all the devotees' mercy. It's also I'm also a bit, somehow was at the right place at the right time. Anybody who, who who comes in contact with this movement and takes advantage of what is being offered by Mahaprabhu is considered to be very specially blessed for some reason. You might there might have been some agatha sukriti in the past. But in general, yeah, there are so many. But, you know, if you take Krishna's Leela and you take Lord Chaitanya's Leela, you'll find there's similarities between how many people actually knew Krishna was a Supreme Lord, that he interacted with millions of persons, but only between 100 and 200 actually knew he was the supreme personality of Godhead, and he presented himself that way. Less with Lord Chaitanya, because he was always denying his actual identity to keep his role as the pure devotee 
who is teaching from the position of the student. And that number was even less. Thank you, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Maharaj. I, I hope to join now, often, now that I know about these classes. If, if you like, I'm just offering it. You might, you don't have to respond to this, but if you like, you may also give one of the classes. Mm, I would be honored to, Maharaj. If if you feel it, it's, I could be of some service, I'll, I would be honored to attempt to do it by your mercy. I would be honored, and I would also, I think the devotees would be very much blessed and edified. <laughs> you're very kind, Maharaj. Uh, so, you're very kind. I, I, I'll, uh, I'll try my best. If this is something you would like me to do, I'll try my best. Yeah, there are days when I'm unable to give the class because of other, other programs that somehow arise. So uh, we'll make notice of that in a few feel inclined and you can. Okay, Maharaj, whatever you say, Maharaj, if, uh, if, if you would like me to, I'm, I, I'm willing to try my best. Yeah, I would love to. I'm sure the devotees would love to hear you also. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. <laughs> I'm working on that project you gave me. It's going to take a little time. I ran into a little bit of a blockage in uh, Mayapur, so I have to look for other sources. But I'll, um, I'm working with it, though. I need a little more time for that. Uh, so, sorry, Maharaj, I didn't catch the uh, very last bit. Could you please repeat that? I will. Uh, you know, the, uh, the dissertation you wrote yeah. On, yeah, yeah, yeah. on the Srimad Bhagavatam. We're yes, trying to publish, but yeah, yeah. Uh, Congregational Development Ministry, who I was hoping would do it, it seems like yeah. they, they're not inclined for whatever reason. Um, is that, Maharaj, uh, did you, okay, that's a bit interesting because what happened was just a couple of days back, I met Adidevi Mataji. And I mentioned to her this thing, and she put me in touch with Seva Swarup Prabhu, and I told them about uh, that you recommended uh, uh, the CDM as a possible choice. And they said that, okay, if Maharaj is recommending this, then yes, we are willing to do it. So. Uh, All right. Well, I'll, I'll, um, I'll inquire again from, from Seva Swarup and see, but see what the situation is. I see. Uh, did, did he say initially that he wasn't? No, um, he, what he did was I offered another book and he blocked that one. He said, I, he said, we want to publish only things that are in line with Congregation of the Development Ministry uh, outlook. They have a certain outlook. I and see. So, right. Yeah, I was trying to get one book published, which was the Sanyas book. Okay, and then, okay. And then I thought, well, if he's not going to publish that, then better not even ask him about yours. Oh, actually, I did just a couple of days back, and I mentioned you, and they said, okay, if Maharaj is recommending, then we are willing to do it. And All right. So... Well, I'm going to use that against them if they say anything otherwise. <laughs> I would be really grateful, Maharaj, if uh, you would consider writing like a review, a short review that could be included in the. I book. think I didn't I do that when you initially put it out. Remember, I gave you. A, a yes. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That was there. So, like, can I use a portion of that also? For. Yeah, you can use whatever you think is would be relevant to, you know. Making, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll I'll select a portion from that and I'll just check with you once more if you approve of it, if it can be used as a review of the book, then right. I'll yeah. I wouldn't see any reason not to approve it, but if you want to send it to me, that's oh, me. okay. Okay, okay, sure, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your kindness. Hare Krishna, my obeisances. Thank you. My obeisances. Thanks, Gopi Karadika Mataji. Shridevi Mataji, please go ahead.
Uh, dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for this class today on Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But I have a question on this very last verse that you quoted about a uh, devotee, even if he falls away, will ultimately be successful. But a non-devotee, even if he performs his uh, duties, will gain nothing. So I'm a little bit confused. Maybe my understanding is not correct. Not maybe, my understanding is not correct. So kindly enlighten me. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, one who performs his occupational duties very carefully pleases me just by performing them. So even if a non-devotee is carefully performing all his occupational duties, will that not be pleasing to the Lord, even though he may not know him or consciously be worshipping him? Simply by performing his duties, is he not pleasing the Lord? Well, what you're referring to is the verse in Srimad Bhagavatam in the first canto when one uses their occupational duties to as service to the Lord. But this verse is not saying that. They're talking about a person who is simply absorbed in their occupational duties as a material, uh, material activity. So this is verse is simply saying that the materialists, even if they are performing their occupational duties, they don't gain anything. If they offer to Krishna in devotion, then that's karma yoga, and then they do make some advance. But this verse is the, the distinction between material and spiritual. So this is pertaining to those who only do their work for sense gratification, for personal uh, goal achievement, but not in any way doing their duties uh, or have even a sense of duty towards their dependents, but they're simply doing it for their personal sense gratification. Yeah, there's no connection with the Lord. This, that's the right. indication in, in this verse. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Shadevi Mataji. Any other questions? Yeah. Hi, Krishna Gurudev. Thank you very much for that lovely lecture. Thank you so much. Hi, Krishna. Okay. So. Everyone prepare themselves by uh, hearing as, as much as you can about Mahaprabhu. It's, as we mentioned, it's the most important day in the life of the Gaudiya Vaishnava, the appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So we are all followers of Mahaprabhu. Whatever bhakti we are executing is coming from Mahaprabhu through the Pacific succession. Mahaprabhu to the Goswamis, from the Goswamis to their followers, and then ultimately down to the you know, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, and Srila Prabhupada. So we have direct connection with Lord Chaitanya. And in this age, this particularly, especially mentioned, no one can approach Vrindavan without the mercy of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He is the uh, he is the bhakti mark for Vrindavan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. It was very really sweet. Okay. No more questions. Thank you very, very much for today, Gumar. Okay, we'll uh, we'll be here tomorrow. Same time, and we'll, we'll speak a little bit about um, Lord Chaitanya's the reasons for his appearance in this world and things related to that. Guru Maharaj, is it Gaur Purnima for you all in Europe also tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. 
Okay. Yeah, they finally got it right. <laughs> We're all on the same page, <laughs> which makes it really easy. <laughs> okay, thank you. Sorry for the criticism. <laughs> okay. Okay, Hare Krishna. Jai. Hare Krishna, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, dear devotees. Thank you very much. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Wishing you a blissful, very wonderful, very joyful Garpurnima. Yay! And to you, Hare Krishna. 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 Thank you for joining. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Go Ranga.